this year's Christmas Dessert Theater was actually in about six different parts. First, we recorded the piano. Next, we recorded the orchestra. Then we recorded the ensemble and solos. Then the choir ladies had a day, the choir men had a day, and we ended with the stage recording and the cast. All right, so good evening. Today, I am with the choir. Hello, choir. Hello, oh, hello Danny. <laughs> so we just finished the virtual Christmas dessert theater. And my question to you guys is, um, what was your first thought when you heard about a virtual CDT? Can we do this? <laughs> yeah. That was my first thought was, can we do this? My first thought was, this is going to be one really good time. I like an optimist. Yeah. Yeah. I could not figure out how we were all going to sing together and be together. I just, in my mind, my wildest imagination, I couldn't figure it out. It was definitely a stretch, but it was a lot of fun. It was. <laughs> I knew that we would um, learn a lot, discover a lot, rise to the occasion and uh, just have a fantastic time. And I have to say we sure did. We really didn't know what we were getting ourselves into exactly. Either. You got that right. <laughs> well, your leadership didn't know either. <laughs> Ignorance yeah. is bliss. Which was kind of scary. If we had known when we started, <laughs> we maybe we wouldn't have <laughs> gone <laughs> forward. So good thing we didn't know. When I saw virtual choirs on the internet, then I realized that this could be done, and it could be done very nicely. So, And one thing I love about this is we're reaching so much so much many more people than we could have had yet done yeah. just around it. So what was it like? Um, a lot of you said you didn't, weren't sure and <laughs> ignorance is bliss. So what was it like to actually be a part of the event? Well, it was sure a new experience for me. I'm not used to memorizing any choral right. music. I, that's not, I, <laughs> I'm used to staring at the book and singing the notes. But that, So it was new in that regard. And we kind of knew that I think we all knew that this was going to be a COVID Christmas. Zoom choir rehearsals and Zoom sectional rehearsals were very interesting. Uh, having, to, having to sing to yourself and be muted. I was going to say it was a little surreal to be singing Christmas songs in the middle of the summer, but that was, it was fun. We got, I've been in the Christmas spirit the whole time. So <laughs> for me, I really, really enjoyed listening to the, the soundtrack over and over and over again. I made myself listen to it three times a day. Of course, then it goes around in your head in the evening, you have to trying to go to sleep and you wake up in the morning, and you have a certain song, but I really like the variety in this, this one. It's song for everybody. And that coffee song, I don't even like coffee, but honestly, it was so cute, and yeah. the guy that did it did it so well. And um, then, then there was the more serious side of the hymn to him and and the meaning of Christmas. And I just I loved the, just the diversity and the way it was all pulled together for all nine people that are in it. All had different problems, different needs, but same God. I've never been in anything like this before. So working with Melissa and meeting all new people, I didn't know most of the people when I got there and then finding out what we were really doing. Right, Stephen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, it, but it turned out to be really great. I really enjoyed it. You know, we took it on faith. We're, we're singing it in our own room, living room, and to our best of our ability, and then we get to those recording sessions, and we sounded great. We sounded great. <laughs> it's kind of hard to uh, stay depressed when you're singing Christmas Christmas songs during this pandemic. I mean, it was a it was a great spirit lifter as well. So, uh, yeah, and I think we all learn our reliance on God, and that God was in this whole thing putting it together and, and giving you everything you needed to know, Danny, and the rest of everybody doing their part. I mean, we couldn't have done it without God. This hand was definitely yeah. on it. For something like a virtual choir rehearsal to actually work, <laughs> um, absolutely no feedback. You didn't have feedback. You only had your own voices. I couldn't hear any voices. All I had was the piano and, and uh, a lot of prayer. <laughs> 
But the Julie mentioned, you know, working on the Christmas music in the summer, you all know my office is in the basement, so I have no idea what's going on outside. But normally when I'm working on Christmas music and I come up at the end of the day, it's dark. And I was walking into the building with three hours of sunlight left and it was 90 degrees. <laughs> yes, in fact, then when we were actually doing the, the filming and it was, you know, warm weather out and we're, we're, we have on coats and sweaters and scarves, it was a little warm. <laughs> yep. And... and, and Enduring all the little glitches like that that happened when we were trying to sing and the yeah. microphone went off on you and different things, uh -huh. but you know, we we did it. But I just I was amazed at myself. Suddenly I was in, in a room with the altos and our teacher Rhonda was playing the piano and she would always say, Oh, you girls did so well and we're going, Yeah, right, she couldn't hear a thing. <laughs> she just <laughs> said that to encourage us. And I don't know, Julie, how you felt with the altos, but that was, to me, that was just over the top for technology. That They could put us in a room. It was just amazing. <laughs> and then to be able to show up the day that we did the recording at the church and hear how it kind of came together, that was very, yeah, rewarding. That was very rewarding. It's like, wow, this, this is coming together. So thinking yeah. outside the box, that's what this whole COVID experience has been is, coming up with a, a way to, we're not going to give up. We're not going to be defeated on this. So I am thrilled that we were able to, you know, have a dessert theater and do something unique that none of us will ever get to do again. This has been a great experience. So, <laughs> so what was y'all's favorite part and or song? Coffee. <laughs> like Sandy, I hate coffee, but I really enjoyed the song. <laughs> That one was pretty catchy, but him to him is beautiful. Yeah, so really that's probably my favorite one. So how, now that you guys have been there, done that, you've got the t-shirt, how are you, how are you describing this to your friends and family? Well, for me with the preschool, that is a, a great audience to reach out to. Um, this is not as intimidating for the preschool families who maybe don't attend a church that's so much easier to click on something and to be able to watch it in their own house um, and share the true meaning of Christmas versus maybe having to come to church where maybe they're not quite as comfortable. So this is a great outreach. I will uh, have been talking about it with them. We'll make sure to put it on our own little Facebook page and send that invitation out to the parents. So uh, I love the idea of the boarding pass advertisement. It's so perfect. Yeah, I've emailed it. Uh, thanks for the electronic copy so that, yeah, uh, that I sent it out electronically to a lot of my high-tech friends and family. <laughs> I've been talking about it since we were doing it, it because yeah. it was just yeah, so much too. fun and, and so different for, for me and my age group and all that. I live in Mobile Home Park, a senior park. And we had exercise class, and in there I've been telling everybody. And I, but our, my family's coming over that night. We're going to have a watch party. I'm going to make cookies for the neighbors and deliver some cookies too. All right. So don't forget to come and be a part of VGBC's 2020 Christmas Dessert Theater presentation of An Unexpected Christmas, premiering Sunday, December 13th at 6 p.m. Tickets are available to download and share at vgbc.org slash cdt.